All right, I'm going to open up in prayer. I got it. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for all the wonderful stories of how you provide and how you have such a plan for history and that we can look back and see your wonderful fingers throughout your story, and uh, which gives us confidence to know that in this day and time you still have your fingers throughout history because it is your story. And Lord, I just pray that you would open our eyes this morning, that we would see wonderful truths through your word. In your precious name we pray, amen. Okay. Well, you know, they always want me to review you, chapters 1 now through 8. But um, I'm going to save that for next week because we only have three weeks after today. So I know, it's just coming up so fast. I can't believe it. So we're going to go right to Romans 9, okay? Thank you. All right, um, get out chapter 9. And we're going to go through just a few verses at a time because what I really, really want to get to is Exodus with Pharaoh so that we can understand God hardened his heart, Pharaoh hardened his heart, God hardened his heart, Pharaoh hardened his heart, fire, okay? I want us to get a really good understanding of that. So that you may. Exactly, okay? So you can never get misunderstood about how that God hardened his heart, so it's God that predestined him to hell. Because, you know, that comes up in your head. Mm-hmm. It should come up in your head because that's what you're reading if you take it out of context. If you take it into context, knowing what predestined means and predestined for what, we'll understand it. Okay? So let's, I'm going to try and get us a clear understanding of that part. All right. Uh, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. What's this whole chapter about? I know. Okay, we've only just kind of gotten into that arbitration worksheet, right? God's mercy. This is the first mention of the word mercy in this whole book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just in the book of Romans. Because I went to mark it, I'm like, oh, well, how did I mark it before? Did you guys do that? Oh. What color did I What did I color Yeah. <laughs> well, you did it because it wasn't there. Interesting. Okay, now that you know that, why do you think that is? We've been talking to Oh, that's a good point. Up to this point, they may not have recognized their need for mercy. We had to get through the sovereignty to know of his mercy. Good. We had to get to the, through the sovereignty to know we needed mercy and that he gave mercy. Okay? Good. Um, but chapter 9, who is it addressed to mainly? The Israelites. The Israelites, yes. yes. So the Jewish nation as a whole. It is not, can you hit that space bar again? Oh, yeah, all right. Not about those who are saved as part of the church. Context is king. Okay? If you need to write that in your Bible next to chapter 9, this is written to the Jews. Mainly, as a whole, as a nation. Okay? So what does he say about the Jews in these verses? Mm, they, that's adoption as sons. I yes. love that. I just like, oh. Okay, have we seen adoption as sons before? Yes. yes. Yeah, where did we see it? Eight, that's right. Verse 23. Okay, now, Paul was a Jew. How does this whole chapter, or verses one and two, start out? I mean, are you happy? I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> like this. Like, okay, so chapters one through eight, I'm telling you the truth, right? There is no partiality with God. What else could he My, be referring to? Lying on my conscience. My conscience. Where do we yes. see that? Bearing right? witness. Bearing witness. Don't we see the conscience, whether it convicts you? Yeah. Or it goes, yeah, you're doing the right, right. thing. Yeah. Okay? Oh, wow. What else is he telling you? The truth. The gospel is for everyone. Everyone. And that Christ. Verse 16 and 17, right? He's not ashamed of the gospel. It's for the Jew and the Gentiles. So, talking to you Jews, chapter 9, it's for the Gentiles as well. Who does he give examples of as he goes through? Yeah. Abraham. Okay? Did Abraham get saved by the law? 
No. no. Righteousness is by faith. Okay. Isn't that? It was, I just love Chuck's sermon Sunday. It was just wonderful. I just thought that was awesome. Um, and I thought, oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, I didn't see that. That's good. But now I put that down. It was too bad we wonderful. weren't shouting Baptist, you know. I know. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting started. We'll start. Start. Go for it. Uh, there we go. We Cliff does it. that every once in a while. He does. Uh, I want to join in with him though. So he's got to give me a clue when he's going to do that, so I can. <laughs> 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 he, Paul calls himself a Jew, yes. right? Yeah, but in 28, 2.28 it says they are not all Jews. That are descendants, yes. yes. Now that was different than all Jews that are of Israel or descendants, okay? So as a Jew, you'd go back and go, well, what would be your next question? Who am I then? Son of God. Who am I? Yeah. And well, if, if all of Israel isn't just descendants of Abraham, well, who exactly are you going to tell me is actually included in here then? Right, Barbara? And also, that's pointing out to Ishmael and Esau. Everyone that came from Abraham. So it singles out just how God is so in charge of this whole plan of grace and mercy. Yep. Children of promise. Jesus came through that line. That's right. But it's still by faith. But there's nothing haphazard. It's all his plan. Grace, faith, mercy. Which comes wonderfully salvation. through the uh, the video today because I did not see that Ishmael was firstborn, but God chose Isaac. Isaac. Esau was firstborn, but God, but God chose, chose Jacob. 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 Yeah. Okay. Because the wisdom of ah. man, God comes so it. So following God through, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. fathers, and they say, but Abraham yes. is our father. Yes, but do you notice yeah. that God did not choose Ishmael, and he did not choose Esau. He chose Jacob, and he chose Isaac. Okay? So these rules and regulations you're trying to apply don't right. apply. So if you go back through, which I did <laughs> before Sunday, Abraham's lineage to Noah... Yes. It was always the firstborn yes. that is mentioned in that. Yes. Right. Yes. And so, because I want to know who told Abraham about God. What did yes. he know? Yes. And Noah was still alive when Abraham was a young man. Isn't that something? You know, so when, ooh, okay, even though the Tower of Babel happened, but look where Noah, and look where Abraham lived, close to the mount. Okay, yes, I can see all this. But then... After all of that long list, and then God chooses no. Isaac as a second board instead of Ishmael. I, I just... Oh, oh, you're so good, God. For me, I'm like, this is just so cool. Okay, so I mean, yeah. you do that because you can just see, okay, and so Cliff yes, says... Yes, I have that. I love that in my... Um, I, I my, keep it in my... I, I ISB, because I'm like, who's alive when... Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. cool. Okay, yeah. no, they didn't know each other, but this... I love that part. I'm going to copy that. Okay. Okay. But we can you know, that. and they didn't have the written word, right. and what was their history, which is God's history, exactly. it was their family. Right. right. It was not anything else but the family right. history. Family was... That was all they had to learn. That's it. So that wasn't that much that's it. God compared to what we learned. creation yeah. screams that there's a creator. Yes. Yeah. That is so true. Yes, and again, that's again what he's saying. I'm not lying. Yes, I, I told you this. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, next, he had great sorrow for yes. them. Why does he have great sorrow? Because they didn't believe. They just won't. Again, they just won't. Not that they can't. They won't. They won't. Okay. They won't believe. Keep that in mind when we get to Pharaoh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, can you hit the space bar again, there, Vicky? Yes. Okay. What if I? Yeah. Is that working? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. He had the, the, the Jews had the first adoption and being children of God. Right. So does the Jew have great benefit? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Because they're just in a line, aren't they? Did he glorify them above all the other nations? Okay. How did he do that? Egypt's a good example. Egypt's a really good example. 
Right. He didn't take anybody else out. He took land. them out. And what? Promised land. And the promised land. Who in today's world, who's fighting over what land? <laughs> Why do they just want that? Why can't they go out way? There's so many other places. I Why know, do you have, and have that? Well, if they have that, then there will be no God to worship. There you go. There you go. That's a good point. But do you think Israel ever is going to give up that land? No. No. Well, they better not. No. no. They no. better not. God won't let them. <coughs> okay? Uh, the next one. Part of God gave them his covenants and his law. Right. Where did he do that? Moses. With Moses. Right. Go further back in Genesis. Well, he gave, he gave Abraham. Abraham, Abraham the first covenant. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Abraham. Go back to Genesis 3.15. And he gave it to... The no. Messiah was promised, yes. wasn't he? Okay, now does that mean Adam and Eve were Jews? No. 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 Okay. He gave covenant to Noah too. That's it. That's it. Yeah. But the Jews are special because he gave his covenant and his law. Okay. Yeah, his temple and his temple promises. Is anybody else allowed to go in there and serve? No. No. If you're a Jew, if you're not a Jew, then you could go like maybe in the outer court or something. Yes, that's not, not in the inner court. You can't go in and worship with them. You can't make sacrifices, no, nothing like that. Okay? Right? The fathers were Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is what he prefers to here. When he says, verse 5, whose are the fathers and from whom is the Christ according to the flesh who is overall, God bless it forever, amen. Okay? All right? Um, Christ is from Israel, but they rejected him. He chose them, but they rejected him. Okay? All right, let's go on to verses 6. Okay, keep going. Hmm? Did it pass yet? Yeah, go ahead, one more. 6 okay. to 13. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For they are not all Israel who are descended from Israel. Now change that word Israel to Jacob. Because okay. they're one and the same. Okay. Right, right. That clears it up right. just a little. Why did he not we call know. Abraham Israel? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can do that. I'm like, oh, right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Okay, I, that makes a little more sense. Okay, go back to the adoption of sons. Anybody here adopt a kid? have adopted kids in the family. Right. I don't have to legally adopt kids, but kids come into my home. home. And they call me Mama Goins, and I treat them Caitlin's like my kids. one of them. You know? They're doing something. I go, what do you think you're doing? Why are you doing that? You're screwing up your life. Why are you doing that? That's so dumb. You know it's dumb. I know. I consider that as adoption of sons, man. So you leave my house again, I'm going to treat you like my kid. So if dishes need to be done, get your hiney in there. We need to do dishes. I fed you. Go clean up. But they want to be treated like that because now they know where they belong and they know they're not going to get away with anything in our house. It's, they have an accountability. They need that. Barbara? It's almost like a distilling pro process from Abraham, pick between two, okay, <coughs> you know, he's a flesh, Isaac's a promise. Right. Trot on down and get to, oh, Jacob's the child of promise. Esau's not keeps distilling. That's true. And then, in, in other words, getting refined, refined, and refined. Got and refined. It, though, oh, but guess what? Look back at Abraham. That thread is faith. Right. So it's like it yeah, distills right. a while, oh, and that's then the key to the whole. That's it too, because he's not following him. the law. It's still yeah. by faith because right. it's a promise. Yeah. That's a good point. That is a very good point. Um, why can we say God's world has not failed? It can't. it can't. It can't. How do we know that? God says it. Because God can't fail. <laughs> right? My, well, he said my, my word will not fall. Return void. Right. Okay. And we know we can't add anything or take away from it. Right. Okay. It is sacred. And when God says something, that's it. It's not, look, you told me you do this and you didn't do that. Why didn't you do that? You know, you, oh, I forgot one. Or, oh, yeah. Right? No, that's not God. Now, maybe he won't do it in your timing, okay? And you think he's really delaying, and there's really a problem. Did you forget? No, he hasn't forgotten. That's 
Remember, time doesn't exist. Just the next thing is the next thing is the next thing for God because he sees everything in entirety, not, oh, this is where we are. No, no. Okay? Because he has no beginning, he has no end. Okay? So when we think of predestination and all those things, we have to keep that in mind too. Okay? Okay? Uh, next. He chose Isaac over Ishmael. That's not right. Ishmael was his firstborn, but was he of promise? Now, didn't God specifically say it will come through Sarah, your wife, not your maidservant? Okay? And it was Hagar's dealing, and it wasn't God's dealing. That's it. Sarah's idea, but Abraham could have said, Oh, no, 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 no. God said. But he didn't. (laughs) Did he? Okay? Here we are with the Arabs and the Israelites. Well, there you go, okay? But again, God's sovereignty. He knew all that was gonna happen, now didn't he? Yep. Okay, Uh, he chose Jacob over Esau. Isaac had two sons, right? What do we know about the birth of them? Oh, he's hanging on to his heel, right? Like, no, no, I'm first, I'm first already. Yeah, right. Already, (laughs) okay? That's great. I almost wish we would put pre-chose before Isaac and pre-chose before Jacob. Because it wasn't even after they were both on the scene. It was right. prior. It was prior. It was predestined. Right. Pre- okay. Established. Yeah. I like that, um, that it is not the children of the flesh who are children of God, but the children of the promise are I, regarded as descendants. For yeah. this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. There is no doubt who was supposed to have the son. Okay, mm-hmm. and not only this, but there was Rebecca also when she had conceived twins by one man, our father Isaac. For though the twins were not yet born, okay, hadn't done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose, according to His choice, would stand, not because of works, but because of yeah. Him who calls. Because okay, Esau seemed to have been the better one. Well, yeah. Stronger, ruddy, right? They always described him as a man that was just, you know, muscle guy, right? And Jacob, yeah, mama's so favorite. right? His favorite, mama's, mama's favorite. favorite. Why do you think Esau was Abraham's favorite? Because he was firstborn. He was firstborn. He was more like him. He was, yeah. That's it. Which you know, Abraham had to be. Yeah. Okay. It was said to her, the older will serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? That is a strong word, um, but in the common, no, in the definition I'm looking up, Mm -hmm. this is not emotion. No. We're not talking about emotion. It's choice. That's all. It's not God hates, God loves. It's God chose and God did not choose. Okay? So it's not emotion. Yeah. That's a tough word. It is a tough word to read. I agree. Yeah, I, I, okay? Hated just as in regard to choice. Okay? What shall we say then? There is no injustice with God, is there? May it never be. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Now, what does that remind you of? On the attributes of God. Mm-hmm. He's sovereign. He's sovereign. sovereign. There's no mm-hmm. disputing that. He's That's gonna, it. He's going to do what he's going to do. And it says this, there's no injustice with God, is there? No. How do we know there can't be? Because it's not his character. It's not his character. Okay? He doesn't act unjustly. He always acts justly, righteous, holy. Okay? That's what I put sovereign over all three years. Sovereign over Or just over take out heaven. sovereign, just do reign. Yeah. Reigns in sovereign. You could do reigns. that. You could do that. Okay. And nothing escapes his control and foreknown plan. Right. Now, take this back. How long have you known that verse in scripture that says, right, Jacob I have loved and Esau have I oh, hated? And really struggled time. with that. <laughs> yeah, long time. Okay. Being the students of the word that you are, how could you clear that up? Look up hated. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, look when up you go hated and look up yeah, loved look, in with yeah. within that context. context. How look is at it within, within, within that the context. context. Yeah. Okay. If you have a problem with a certain scripture, going, I know. Go read know. the whole. God context. is not like that. Then go to your work study. Okay. Right. Truthfully, <laughs> all you got to do is go to blueletterbible.com. That's it. Yeah. It pulls it up. 
It has Strong's number. Click on it. It right. gives you the definition and the, and the word, whether it's Old Testament or whether it's Greek. It yeah. doesn't matter. Now, I always get the number. I read what they have, and then I use that number to go to Zodiacus. Amen. Okay? That's what I do. <laughs> Zodiacus is not online yet that I know of. No, because no, okay? I tried to find it. Oh, did you? Okay. Okay, because he I usually to... clears it up for me. And because I... he'll commentate on, look, it's used in Scripture here, 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 and here. Therefore, and he'll use it in a the context that's of that it. scripture. Because he is such a Greek Hebrew scholar. Just, that is what I love about I, I need that background. I, you know, at this point in my life, I don't have time to go back to Hebrew school or Greek school. And that was his major, and so I'm learning from him. Okay? He's not a commentator. He's a, a teacher. Yes, a translator. That's a much better word. Mm -hmm. He's yes. a translator. Right. Okay? Um, he's awesome. I Notice that Malachi was written after Esau and his descendants had proven to be what? Godless. <laughs> Godless. Godless. <laughs> okay. So he's just verifying what God said would happen, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Malachi is giving proofs. And, and what do we know about Malachi? It's the last. The last. last Old Testament. Last Old Testament. And God shuts his mouth. <coughs> For 400 years he said <coughs> nothing. <coughs> Why would he mention Esau in Malachi? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Why? Why does he have to pick him out? Why did he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Why did he decide to push Edom and Esau into the last book of the Old Testament? I want to know why, which I think I know why, Abraham wasn't called Israel, since he's the father of he's the father of promise. Yes, but he's the father of. Ishmael and Isaac and he did not have 12 sons therefore we did not have 12 tribes right. I mean you go back but I mean you know just wonder why didn't you do it at this time Lord and we see yeah. though in that God's just like you said distilling God's mercy God's faithfulness and the refining of his of his people for his right. plan right right so um, but you know just all these odd questions did I put it there? Do one more thing. Did I put it there that these words were, yes, love, love and, hate and hate indicate it. choice, not emotion. Mm -hmm. That I got from Zodiades, and I thought, oh. Right. Praise God. Okay, I get it, because yeah. I don't see how God could hate one of Abraham's descendants, or how could God hate one and love the, no, no. Okay. But isn't it interesting the change of meanings of word? Because yes. we don't think of hate as choice. Right. Yeah. right. We think of it as emotion. That's it. Right. And maybe that's the way it had to be translated in the Hebrew. Because that's the only word we had to mm -hmm. identify with that choice. I, think I don't that's know. Why Zodiatus goes into so much explanation. Yeah. Okay. And some of the others. The others I've looked at sure don't. They sure don't. They sure don't. And but see, still, you can go to your word study tools and if you dig, dig, dig. You'll go, oh, I get it. Okay, did it not help you when she talked about predestination last time and she said it's yes. only used in three places in Scripture? Mm hmm So Scripture has to interpret Scripture, right? Right. So then we know predestined is never for someone to go to hell. hell. Never in Scripture does it say that. Not ever. That's huge in your understanding of predestination. Okay? It's their choice. It's always their it's choice. choice. Right. Choice, choice, choice. And God's, um, yes, even from the beginning, only part of Abraham's descendants and part of Isaac's descendants have been Israel. That's what he's saying then, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And all Israel is not Israel. Right. Okay? So God's promises didn't fail because they can't. Which I didn't know. Israel failed. Yes. See? <laughs> and, and no matter how old I get, I'm going to continue to learn and learn and learn and learn going, oh, I never saw that. <laughs> cool. uh, I studied this book before. Can we just do so? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah I missed wrong. that. So, okay. It's like, read this story about a Pharaoh again. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I never saw that. I never saw that. So that's cool. Right. And even all of Jacob's sons can't claim lineage to Jesus. Right. It's right. only Judah who wasn't even again that's it. the oldest. Reuben messed up. Right. Well. Big yeah. time. Right. So because Reuben messed up, again, so could we not even take it through, right? Mm -hmm. Jacob. Now it's not Reuben. It's for Jesus Judah. as our Savior. Right. Not firstborn again. Not firstborn again and not firstborn again. Yeah. Interesting. And, you know, go to David. 
He was the last. Why wasn't his oldest brother right. king? Right. right. God chooses the youngest, this little shepherd boy that's, you know, whatever. This is all you got. For some, for some. Right? Anoint him. Out back he goes to his sheep. All he has is a oh, That's shot. a winner. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Again, God is sovereign. He knew David had the heart. Mm -hmm. That would go after God. Do you? Or just Solomon's son. I mean, why would he have gone to another family? Yeah. 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 John. Why? Jonathan. Why didn't he just go to Jonathan? Yeah. Why totally cut Saul off? Because of Saul's sin. Mm -hmm. And he had already told you that the scepter won't depart from you. That's it. That's it. Yeah. What came through for me was that the Jewish people had the choice just like we have the just choice. Just like we mm -hmm. have it. And I always, I never saw that mm -hmm. before. Yeah, That's true. But it seems to be more of a stumbling block for them yeah. than it is for us. They have a, a strong, stubborn Personnel. Is that yes, people? They're a stubborn people. Is that people? Right. Okay. Tradition. Yes, we have. Uh, I never understood. Um, oh, shoot. What's the name of that? Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler on the Roof. Thank Fiddler you. Yeah. I'm like, I see. So tall. I'm like, what's the name of that? So, anyway, I never understood it until I saw the play because Mama insisted at every three, all three of our weddings that um, my older brother, my younger brother, and me, that. Uh, Sunrise, sunset, be sun. Yeah. Oh, that was wow. that was it. That's all she wanted. I, she didn't care what else was done. She wanted that sun. Yeah. I didn't get it until I took her October two thousand nine to see oh, the play really? with two Paul. Or I've never oh. seen the play. You had? Oh didn't my even goodness. get it. Oh, oh my So we goodness. go to Bob Card. I'm like, oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I got four times. We're gonna sing that one. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, that is perfect. But yeah. I've never been to a wedding. And look how many I've been. I've played for so many. I've never heard Sunrise. Seriously? Sunset, I don't think. Oh, oh, I have. Wow. Yeah, times. I have. But I, I if like, I did, okay, I've forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, I've probably been to a lot of weddings when we put together. So, yeah. so okay. Uh, let's go to 14 to 18. What are those verses about? There's no injustice, no injustice with God. There's no injustice with God, right? What else? He's merciful. Oh, I'm merciful and compassion. Yes. And remember that is first mentioned in this whole book. He is just in all that he does because all of his attributes exist all the time. Okay? One cannot exist without the other. What else? He demonstrated his power. His choices are just. How did he demonstrate his power? Through Pharaoh. Through Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Okay. He alone decides who he, he has, has mercy, mercy on, on and who he does not. Okay, so let's go back and it says, for in the scripture, um, let's start at verse 17. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth so that he has mercy on whom he desires and he hardens whom he desires. All right? Um, verse 19, though. You will say to me then, why did I still find fault? For who resists his will? I love this in verse 20. On the contrary, who are you, O oh man, who answers back to God? The thing molded doesn't say to the molder, why'd you make me like this? <clears throat> Will it? Well, it shouldn't, but it, it does. Okay? <laughs> yes. Haven't you said that before? Yes. Why did you make me like this? Why couldn't you make me like... Patty. <laughs> <laughs> the truth comes out. I always wanted to be bolder. I guess what I am now. And now you are, though. See? <laughs> I always did, too. But I like I always Vicky, did too. That's what I like. That's I right. know we're so different, but you, know, you, know, different. you don't even really know your sisters until I, you tell us. <laughs> of course, I've known for a long time. <laughs> I remember going to hearing this song and going to bed and saying to God, "How come you gave all my brothers and sisters such beautiful voice? How come I can't?" Yeah. <laughs> and I dreamt after that that he said, "I gave you a beautiful voice, but you never used it. That's why you lost it." Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. uh, no goodness! Oh, you asked. <coughs> he told. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know why. She, 
getting back to this now you know as we are why she didn't make us go back to um, chapter 5 which I wrote it down of Romans uh, no of uh, studying about Pharaoh well, oh good to go back that far you mean yes because there even before Moses came up and said let my people go it tells us Pharaoh's heart attitude yeah. from that beginning well okay hold what on hold on Exodus 5 Yes, Exodus, Exodus 5, 2. And After Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go, so that you may hold a festival to me in the desert. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? That I should obey him and let Israel there, go. There you go. I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. So there you go. That sets you up. If you true. see, that's true. you know, and you put it in context, okay, mm -hmm. of what Paul is saying about the Romans, mm -hmm. In Romans, where he goes back, I said him, I made him where he is in the position he's at right. for this time. I raised him up. Raised mm -hmm. him up. Because if you study, when we were in school and study all about the Egyptians of, you know, who was Pharaoh and how they got to be Pharaoh and all of that, right. God allowed him, chose him to be fa this particular Pharaoh at this particular time, because there's more than one. Many, yes. You know. Why just him? Why that particular So one? you, And then you go over to see, which I also wrote down, how God gets us over to a depraved mind. What was that scripture? Yes, yeah. that was uh, one. Isn't that Romans, Romans 1? 28. If you go back into that, even in the letter which Paul is writing to then, you see... And in the context of he does not desire us to go to hell. Right. You know, pre, he does not predestine us to go to hell. To go so to you hell. get the whole picture of, oh, yes, God finally just said, okay, if you're not going to believe me, then here you go. I'll just let your heart go be hardened. Your heart's going to be hardened. Your heart's going to be hardened. Mm -hmm. At that point, you see, who, who, is, who is, is this God is? that I should obey him? The what attitude is, of his heart. Where, and so where it's... Who determines it's, where that point is where he gives them over? God. God. Yeah. Okay, so that's the dangerous part in the people that yes. hear the gospel and hear the gospel and hear the gospel and hear the gospel and they come and they do their church thing and they go home, they come and do their church thing and they right. go home and their life is never changed and they have a religion, not a relationship. When does mm -hmm. that point come where God just gives them over? You know, but he has so know. much mercy on us. I mean, yes. because how long had those Israelites right. lived there? Did we not and read been that? under them? That's his mercy, hold yes, back his holding hand, back. Okay. All so, right. Um, well, that so. always bothered me about us because you always have a choice to make. Always. I know he he writes you off, so to speak. But that's because of his foreknowledge. It's because of his foreknowledge, and always remember, but we still never have a choice predestines them to hell. Right. Okay? They still have you have not ever had a friend that you continue to talk to and you'll be their friend, but everything that you say about Christ falls on deaf ears. Yes. They are going to do what they want to do because that makes them happy. <laughs> I know God doesn't want it, but that doesn't make me happy, but I'm going to make myself happy and this makes me happy. You love them, you pray for them continually, but all your energy is not spent in that person anymore. Okay? Yeah. Until God softens their heart, until they come to the end of themselves. Mm -hmm. And they realize, like Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. you are the most high. Mm -hmm. Okay? It is you who raises kings up and sets them down. Then, until that happens, for me personally, I don't pour my energy, 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 because they're so stiff necked right now that they're not listening to anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be sweet, I'm going to be kind always going to bring up Jesus any time I get to but worry and stress and what am I going yeah no it's, no. God. it's yeah. God that's got, has to change their heart it's not my um, responsibility to save them mm -hmm. I've spoken their truth mm -hmm. I've spoken the truth and will continue and always every time God gives me the opportunity to speak truth into their life be around them have my children be around them have my family no no probably not uh, be available to them? Absolutely. I will be available to you anytime, day or night. You call me. But continue to surround my family and myself around them? Probably not. Okay? Um, I, I've had somebody go, well, you just homeschool because you want to shelter your children. Well, uh, hello. The problem with that would be... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the reasons. Is there a problem with that? 
I don't, I don't see a problem with that, okay? They're mine. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, I've had a preacher tell me that. I put my kids in public school because they need light. I absolutely agree with that. You're right. God has just not called me to that. He's called me to homeschool. Mm -hmm. Does he call everybody to homeschool? No. No. That's fine. Okay? I'm not ridiculing you because you don't. I just know this is really good for my kid and my family, and this is what works best for, for us. Okay? I don't really kill them for their choice. That's their choice. Everybody has a choice. That's why God ordained you to be that kid's parent. Yeah. Not me. Jenny, do you not feel, and I appreciate so much what you're saying, because real world experience of what our family is going through with our neighbor who had the affair and our kids are still friends. Right. And I have quit going on girls' night out with her because I feel like the celebration of her life and living with this man is wrong. And she, she has said to me, I know what God wants me to do and I'm not willing to do it. So I have really distanced myself from her. But where I struggle with that is in the community, other people, oh, she's supposed to be a Christian and she won't even talk to her. And it's not that we say hi if we pass. Right. We are kind, but we are not close family friends anymore. And we don't go out mm -hmm. to dinner and we don't go to movies. Because and, Proverbs says, bad character corrupts good behavior right. or good morals. Yes. Okay? I'm, and Joni knows I've struggled with that because I've struggled with am I doing the right thing by severing the relationship? And I felt like I was doing the right thing. Yeah. And I, she knows. Right. I am there. And for again, God. the minute he's it's out of her not, life, it's I will not do your I need to do. responsibility what other people think. Yeah, okay. We are hated. Um, I, 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 I tell like people a lot. Christian testimony to other people. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand that. Okay. And I do understand that. Um, and they will probably badmouth you as well. But and the world hated Christ, so the world's going to hate you. That's it. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, I, I, sure I'm does. okay with losing mm -hmm. other friends or what? I, I'm okay with that as long. But I worry that I've so severed this relationship with her. She knows that is, if he's out of her life, I will reconcile the friendship immediately right. if she needs right. me. I am there. My husband is there. He has made it known to her. Right. But she's got to reach that point. That's it. That's it. Because remember, Christ loved the sinner. He didn't condone the sin. Right, right. He loved the I sinner. I love her as a person. Absolutely. Like, I love the life that she's That's it. Her. I mean, you know, if, if we have a uh, if you have a little uh, get together breakfast or something for the ladies in the neighborhood, yeah, invite her, of course. Be her best buddy. Be with her all the time. Mm -hmm. I I just I don't because I know what those people do to me in my spirit. It's everywhere. I can't mm -hmm. I can't awesome. do that. I can't continually put myself around someone that is constantly in the face of God. Okay? I am there. I will witness. I will Every opportunity God gives me, I will take it. But put myself with her and go around and do all the things that she does. No. You would can't be do that. You'd be ridiculed if you did. Right. Yes. You know, they'd still waiting. find yeah. fault with There's you. Because people find that. fault with you oh, no matter what you do. There's a lot of very moral people who yeah. will not even speak to her anymore. See? So, you know, but that's it, her choice. So yeah. Sin is never private. Right. Never. Mm -hmm. It always is public. Yeah. Whether they think it's private, it will never stay private. It will can't. always become public. It can't okay? stay private. And in the no, world, it can't because it affects other people. It, mm -hmm. Sin never just affects, affects <clears throat> one person. Not ever. To the world, when we distance ourselves from a sinful situation, that's us being judgmental. That's right. If we stay in the situation, then they judge yeah, us right. as, you're not supposed to do that. Why you're are you there? So yeah. either way, they're you're going to. So yeah. we have to stand before God, That's accountable right. to him only. And, and I'm, I'm not supposed to be supporting this situation, so I need to pull back. And it's just, we, Remember, it's always personal. Because we want the world to look at us in a favorable light, but... Mm. They're not, not they're not just going to have to get over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you do. You just have <laughs> to get, get over that. that. You know, um, sometimes it's easier than others. Yes. But. You know, and and it takes. I must tell you, um, as you get older, what other people think matters less. Really matters less. I'm okay with that uh -huh. as long as I'm not bringing that into the situation. Yeah. 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 Dishonor yes. to God's name. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh -huh. And if you it know when you look at I the really situation and, and go, <laughs> <laughs> I've <laughs> already reached that point, but and you're good. But to the point of not sure damaging your witness. Yes. That's my biggest concern. Or hurting the body of Christ. Because I, yeah. I would That's want it. other people in the same situation to feel like I 
give good godly wisdom. Yes. In, if they mm -hmm. found themselves in the same situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. You that the same thing and you'll be able son. to. Because you're going through this, you will be able to. My Look, I had to do this it. with my friend, and it was very painful, and it really hurt. Um, but this is the outcome. You know, you don't know the outcome yet. You're in the middle of that, okay? Right. My but, son went through the same situation, and I said, okay, you are not allowed to come to my house together if you are living. I didn't turn. I told the girl that I love you, and it's not your fault, and I told my son that I love you. But I just can't. You are living and you know better than that. Right. Right. Because that would be condoning the sin. And I did can't not care less. <coughs> I'm sure that the girls fight. <coughs> and now they're back together. That's the... Hmm. <laughs> and I'm talking to her. I said, how do I do that? Right. So now I'm just uh, loving them. But I know that the other side of the, you know, the girls' family just can't stand my like that. Yeah. That's well. okay. Welcome I just want to be interested huh. if they get married. <laughs> right. I, mean, I, I keep praying that somebody else will come in their path. If they won't yes. listen to me anymore, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I keep praying that somebody else will come into their path. That's it. That they and God will does listen that to all the time. Yes. All oh, the time. Oh, yes. And it'll ring back in their head. Oh, I remember her saying that. But they didn't listen to that. They all listened to the other person. That's why we're all different. Yes. Truthfully. Judy. We have wisdom through the Lord, and we're just always messing with the mind of fools. Until they have his wisdom, it's foolish minds. Right. You know, mixing this up could be one voice that's really loud, and the rest of them are following, following along. And then they're in the same situation, they'll have respect for you, and they'll come to you. Right. Because they'll be awake at night, oh my gosh, now I'm in that situation, what do I do? I'm going to call Amy. Yeah. What, she's what walked kind this. of you know advice when I was talking to you? <clears throat> Tell everybody what you said. How I, in my situation, I should have to. All you can do is love them. I mean, she doesn't know right. at this point if they're doing the same thing. Right. Um, and so it's she so sees the face of Christ in, in, in you. Mm -hmm. uh, all you can do is love her. Love You've her. made it clear how you feel about certain things. Uh, and, and you only know, I mean, you've had conversations with your son. If there's anything going on, um, yeah, he knows what that's going to do. All right, go to Exodus 7. Because we're going to camp here for just a little bit. Because I think just so we can get a really good handle on how Pharaoh's heart was actually hardened. Okay? Mm -hmm. When we look at this, uh, chapter 7, verse 1, it said, Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to who? Pharaoh. To Pharaoh. And your brother Aaron will be your prophet. What does a prophet do? Foretell. Speaks for he God. Speaks God. for God, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that Moses didn't want to be the speaker, and Moses didn't want to be the yes. brother Aaron. So, you know, Aaron goes before him. Aaron is his word, but who speaks? God speaks to speaks Moses. Moses. Moses speaks to Aaron. Aaron speaks to Pharaoh. Okay? Pharaoh is like God to who? the people. The Egyptians. The Egyptians. Yeah. You saw him, he went out before the water, right? Moses is always confronting him as he goes out to the water. Why does he go out to the water every morning? He yeah, must make the sun rise. Yeah. The sun does not rise without Pharaoh. <laughs> okay? Thank you, Pharaoh. Remember that when yeah. we get to the plague of darkness for how many days? Three days. Three days. Yeah. You can't see your hand in front of your mm -hmm. face. If what happened to Pharaoh makes the sun rise. Was Pharaoh sick? Could be, could go to oh, see? What does that <laughs> mean? Is that Pharaoh's sick so he can't make the sun rise? Well, how can it be God if he's sick? Can he heal himself? That's it. Okay. The vicious serpent. Uh, <clears throat> the sun god, Ra. Okay, Ra is the god. And Pharaoh is his son. No, God says, you will know. I am the Lord God. You will know. Okay? We go and see that. He tells him, verse 3, I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Mm -hmm. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions, my people, the Israelites. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Now, there is much discussion as whether those 12 plagues 
actually happened to the Israelites in the land of Goshen. Yeah, because they were so separated. They were so separated. Now, the first three or four, can't really tell if that happened to the Israelites or not. However, we get to the place where it says that God makes a distinction. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 8, verse 22. <clears throat> it says, but on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will occur tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, you see that God is sovereign over time. Mm -hmm. Okay? One of the plagues, he says, Pharaoh, I'll let you decide when this is going to happen. So Pharaoh says tomorrow. Why doesn't he say today, get rid of all this stuff today? Because he doesn't believe. I think he still wants to go back to his magicians and say, you guys, can't you get rid of this before tomorrow? We only have till tomorrow at dawn, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that we're it, not him. It doesn't happen. So God allowed him to decide, when is that going to happen? Tomorrow. He said tomorrow, then that's when I will do it tomorrow. Now, what do you do with people that say, see, that says God makes a distinction. It says in Romans there is no distinction. There's no partiality with God. We have an error in Scripture then. No. No, we don't. What's context? What does it say? There is no distinction between Jew and Gentile, Jew and Gentile for what? Salvation. 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 Okay. Different context here. He's bringing plagues on Egypt. Yeah. He's not going to bring them on Israel. Israel. Is that anything to do with salvation? No. There is no error in scripture. Context is king. Okay? But people will do that to you. They'll go, look, says that there, mm -hmm. says that there. Mm -hmm. There's right. error. See? No. In context. Within mm -hmm. context, one is talking about salvation, one is talking about his chosen, and Egypt would always signify the world. So it brings up the question, does God deal differently with the saved and the unsaved? So believer and the world, does God deal differently with them? Yes. Yes. Yes, he does. Yes, because he does. Of their own what does Romans 8, 28 say? No, that's 323. Well, we know God all things, things work, work together, together for good. Those, those, good. Who love those who love the Lord. Lord. Who works together for good? For those who love, love, love the Lord, Lord, who are the called, called according to his, his purpose. purpose. <coughs> is there distinction? Yes. There is distinction. There's no partiality. He loves everyone the same. But there is distinction. How God deals with you and how he works all this stuff out for your good is because you are loved and you are called according to his purpose. What's his purpose? His glory. His glory. So when you stop glorifying God and you've done your purpose in this life, then you go home. Amen. That's it. Because your whole purpose in life is to glorify him, to bring him glory, to fulfill his purpose in this point in history for this point in time. When that's done, you go home. Simple as that. Does that make sense? Anybody have questions on, no, no, this is different. That means God loves one and he doesn't love the other. Okay, well, go back to Esau and Jacob. Mm -hmm. One he hated, one he loved. But that doesn't, motion, what is it? Choice. choice. This is choice, okay? God chose, didn't choose. Well, that's not fair. Barbara. That time word is so important. In his time. In his time. All of this is taking place, the Exodus part, 430 years later. Yes. Because mm -hmm. exactly back before the birth even of Isaac, God right. told Abraham, yes. your people are going to be down there 400 years, I years. will bring yes. them back. Right. Joseph, when he was about to die, say, the Lord will, says the Lord will come again. They weren't even a nation yet. They hadn't grown. They had 400 years to That's grow. That's it. Yep. Down That's it. Um, and be protected. Okay, and who was Joseph's dad? Jacob. Jacob. What did Jacob make Joseph promise? 
when he died. Take, 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 take my bones where? Back to, back to the promised land. Back to the promised land. Yeah. Right. Why, would, why does he want that? What's the big deal? The promised land. He believed the promise. Right. Yeah. Okay? He believed that Christ was going, the Messiah was going to come from the promised land. He doesn't want to be buried in Egypt. He wanted, he wanted to be there right. in the promised land that right. God promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He wants to be where he's supposed to be, not here. Okay, so what do you do with, uh, you were enslaved for 400 and, no, you were in Egypt for 430 years. What do you do with that? Because God said 400. Well, he told them to multiply, to plant vineyards. Dead? Remember, when Joseph was there, were they, yeah, but they were they enslaved, enslaved they when Joseph was right? Absolutely not. They were not enslaved. They were in Egypt for 430 years, but that 30 years because the that Pharaoh died and that's it. If you read the whole okay, thing. all right. See how important it is to know your Old Testament history. Right. Know it because it proves New Testament. It also interprets New Testament. I was an old and am an Old Testament junkie is what I call it because yes. I love the Old Testament and it's like oh why I just love to study the New Testament I love to study the New Testament too but without the Old Testament I don't understand the New Testament half as much mm -hmm. okay I don't understand why uh, for instance Joseph and Mary brought pigeons yeah. why would they bring pigeons because they, the one thing, they because were poor they were poor yep plus they couldn't bring a lamb yeah. because they held the lamb. Yeah. How crazy would that be? But unless you know that that's why, who, who would bring pigeons? The poor people bought pigeons, okay? They, they couldn't afford that. So Christ now is not born into wealthy family, okay? He was born in a stable, okay? Which makes it all the more precious to you. And even his precious name, the lamb, Yes. How do you understand the Lamb of God? That's it. Without all that prior. You don't. You can't. All right, you've got a handout on the definition of mercy, but I didn't get one. So I need one. Did anybody um, not get the definition last week for predestination and all that? Did anybody need that? Okay. All right, let's go to mercy. Because God said, right, I will show mercy on whom I have mercy. Uh, it's according to his choice. What's the next one there? Uh, mercy depends solely on God. I love that. It depends solely on God because mankind deserves what? Hell. 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 Okay, yeah. Well, that's what we deserve. Old Testament. Period. Right? Yeah, yet God in his sovereignty chooses to extend mercy to some. Some. Okay, how in our little finite mind do we understand that? Mm. He only does it to some. And those who believe in his son because his son is what gives us. That's it. That's it. His son is what we have to choose. Oh, okay. What? I went one, two. That's fine. That's okay. Because uh, we're going to go on. We're going to come back to that definition in just a second. Um, in 19, I just want to make sure everybody has one, okay? okay? In 19 to 26, I love this answer. When somebody says, well, that's not fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty much what Paul is saying, right? Because he's saying this is the question, this is the answer, this is the question, this is the answer. Well, that's what I would say too, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's not fair because who resists his will? Being the wonderful lawyer that he is, right? He goes... On the contrary, oh man, who are you yeah. to say to the molder, why did you make me like this? Okay? Or does not the potter have a right over the clay to make from the same lump one vessel for honorable use? And notice he doesn't say in another for dishonorable use. Yeah. Okay? No. He doesn't say that. Yeah. He common. says for common use. Okay? What if God although willing to demonstrate his wrath to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. When did he do that? I don't know how 
many pharaohs before the final one had been treating them so badly? I wonder. Yeah. They definitely so, got a horrible situation. There's been something going on. Now? Right. Why does he so we could the apply that to the Israelites, yeah. right? But this is crucifixion. Mm -hmm. This is Christ enduring with much patience, though he could have demonstrated wrath just like that. Okay? Prepared for destruction. He did so. Why? To make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy. Do you know what you're called now? Um, you're a vessel of mercy. Okay? Which he prepared beforehand for glory, even us. Whom he also called, not from among Jews only, but also among Gentiles. You know, go back to that, I am not lying. <laughs> right? I told you this before. When are you going to get it? That's it. And he, he gives the example of Hosea. And again, if you would read that whole book. What oh, a so sad, sad book. Hosea loves Gomer. Gomer goes out and she just plays the world. Though Hosea is there loving her, kicking her back every single time she makes a mess of her life. Okay? Um, go ahead and advance that. Thank you. So, why does God still find fault to resist his will? But again, what can you say to someone who says that? Well, I just have no choice in the matter, right? That's Calvinism. Yeah. You no, no, no. Okay. Can you say that to a person? Who are you, oh man, to say, I don't like the way I am, but to the Creator God who chose you to be mm -hmm. who you are, what family you live in, where you were born, whether you were born in America, India, Africa, Canada, Mexico, whatever. He decided where you're going to be born, what family you're going to be born into. Who are you to ask him? Why should you do this to me? This is a hard one for someone who's been abused in their family yes. to grasp. Yes. But can you not take them to Joseph? Yes. I've never been beaten by my brothers. Exactly. <laughs> but sold what? I take him right straight to the cross. That's right. it too. Okay. Yes. But remember, Joseph was a type of Christ, and he was okay? the child in yes. the story. Yes. And so when and it's Christ been, a, the, yeah, Christ was the adult. I got, yeah. You that's know, true. but I'm that's saying, true. you know, but still, then as you, you have to really have a relationship with the person to walk them through yes yes you know because you know where their pain generates from mm -hmm. okay and Kay went through that a lot last week in the video talking about the woman that had been abused right yes. right she was she not saying right. 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 right she right. was right. raped right. whereas other people she's told stories of and god intervened yeah. immediately and it right. doesn't happen why does he intervene there he didn't there right? mm -hmm. look at joseph why didn't god intervene with joseph no why didn't let he... him get sold into slavery you know his brother knowing that his brother was dead. coming back god knew that his brother was coming back to look for him and then he would be what do you do telling exactly. the rest of them tells his daddy's dad his poor dad okay he thinks for all these years his son is dead yeah. So, therefore, he clings on to Benjamin even more, right. okay, because those were the only two children that Rachel had that he loved mm -hmm. Rachel. Everybody else was okay, but he loved Rachel, and God gave her two, and everybody else ten. Mm -hmm. But those two, and not till what? They were the end. Everybody else had all the kids. Finally, she has these two, and then she dies. So, he's yeah. hanging on to those kids, okay? Abused, and she said that she could not be what she is today if that would not have happened. So, God, yes, yes. she's God a good woman. Yeah. And Joyce Meyer, but look at but look at Joseph, he yes. could have been angry, mm -hmm. revengeful, right? Because he so kept what would have happened in his the abuse, prison? abuse what would have kept to Potiphar? continuing. It did keep continuing. He gets blamed for something he didn't do, he's thrown into jail for something he didn't do, he stays there. He helps, and all of a sudden he's so good, he's in charge of the jail. Tells the guy, two guys their dreams, and one guy dies, just like he said he was going to, and the other guy gets out. Yay, he forgets Joseph for two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But God knew he needed to stay there for two yes, more man. years. Yeah, so what does he yeah. say? What you meant for evil. No, no, God, 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 God. God. Okay. We can fast forward because this so happens where I am reading about Frederick Douglass and the abuse he received when he came out of slavery, but how he turned it into good and even the relationship with his master in the end of, if you read the letters to him, God, oh, what... God, how you used this man yeah. for so much good who had so much awfulness. So do you see how we would have missed that? Yes, and how we would it. have missed it in our generation. That's it. And Joseph's the same thing for the next. God the chose rest to save of God, the world. Yes. Through the, Joseph. The history. Mm -hmm. Okay. The continuing of his story. It was not just. Uh, Egypt and the land of Israel that were saved. It was the whole world that was saved from famine because of right. Joseph. Joseph, right. right. But God, they meant it for evil. God meant it for good because Joseph needed to get into Egypt. And he needed to get second in peace. Yes. And that's how he decided for Joseph. Well, that wasn't fair. He didn't do anything. No, it was not fair, okay, in your eyes. But who are you to say to the potter, you can't mold me like this? Yeah, you can. Okay? You go back to that parent-child relationship, don't you? Mm -hmm. You can't make me do that. Yeah, I can. I can because God ordained me sovereignly to be your parent. I know other people parent like this and some other people and maybe, maybe even your uncles, you know, and they parent somewhere. But you know what? God didn't decide you are going to be born in there. He decided you are going to be born here. And he decided you are going to be first, you are going to be second, you are going to be third, you are going to be fourth. That, God decided that, not me. So if you have a problem, being in the family, talk to God, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the potter. I'm thinking of Job when God asked him, yeah. where were you when I made the earth, when I did all this? Yeah. See how you can take him back to that Just as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. where were you exactly? I, I think some, this is glare, a glaring uh, proof of, that we have to be patient yes. and realize that God does it in his own time. Now look right. how long it took him to take Right. Joseph right. to the heights right. and what all he was able to accomplish. So Joseph was patient. Yeah, we, he was. Yes. And we, we have to realize that we have to be patient. It is. We're, if we pray and nothing happens, that doesn't mean that down the road it won't, but God has his own time. And it doesn't mean that God didn't listen. That's right. Okay. He so, does listen. He does yeah. hear us. It's just that sometimes those prayers aren't answered. Just like right? Like, like we want. want. And it doesn't mean no. It doesn't mean no. Sometimes it just means not right now. That's it. That's it. Well, I pray. He wants to say no. Right. But sometimes it does mean no. Sometimes it does mean no. Okay? Now, if you're supposed to be patient and see the big picture, right? So when somebody gets in front of you in the grocery line or in back of you and they're irritated because somebody has to go and look up the price because there's no price on that and that's... <laughs> okay, that just happens to be where, where my life is. How do you stay calm and you don't get sucked into that? Okay, see the big picture. Mm -hmm. Stand back and go, wow, Lord, I wonder why you wanted that. I mean, it really doesn't work, and that was a waste of my time. <laughs> okay. Have you ever been in a situation like that? I, I've had it happen to me. Then driving home, there is an accident seconds ahead of me. Oh, is <laughs> Seconds, yeah. you know, car pulls out. Something else. Yeah. If the checkout thing had gone faster, you'd have been, you know, Whoa. in the accident. Yeah. And not, not that I'm a patient person now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really? We kind of have to go. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Angels worked overtime today. Thank you for the slow line. That's yeah. it. That's it. Okay, I, I went to the, made my appointment at the uh, driver's, you know, DMV yesterday. Uh, went on the website, got all the information that they say to get because they've spelled my middle name wrong. Therefore, my passport middle name is wrong. Oh. So I got to go back through all that again. I'm like, okay, you know, I'll go till July. This is only April. It's no big deal. I got all my... You know, my birth certificate with the correct one, I got my driver's license, I got a bill to our house, I got, you know, proof of residency, whatever. Married so, I made an appointment so I don't have to wait in the line. So, I go and I get in there, went on time and stuff, and they said, well, we have to have a mail that's addressed to you at your address. 
And so I'm looking at the OUC bill, it has Ron's name on it. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here's the path. He's Ron. He's on my marriage certificate. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't work. Do you see the difference? Oh. Marriage, to me, it was like marriage just got another blow. Right there. <laughs> yeah. You can't, uh, you know, get something from him, facts, or no, no, no. Or you can fill this, fill them out, but we have to have something that's in the mail to prove that you live there. Uh, 29 years of marriage doesn't prove I live there. <laughs> so I sit down, you know, and I call Ron. No, he's already on his way to work, so he can't come and give me the, well, what about Anna? No, she's at class. And, well, that's the name of that. So I get in the car. <sighs> right? Waste of time. I'm like, you know what, Lori? For some reason, you didn't want me here today. You don't want me to get this fixed today. You want me to get it fixed later. It is what it is. I can't fix it. I'm not going to sit here and stew about it. <coughs> I'm going to go home. I'm going to school with Daniel and I'll go to work and I'll be fine. Not exactly my plan, but that's okay. So I went home, found things in my name to the address to me. I have like five of them. <laughs> of course, a lot of them are medical bills, but they're to me. Yeah. Um, different doctors, but they're to me. Put that down. Um, then I filled out the form, just in case. That lists me either as a transient, I must have a guardian, or something because he has to say that yes, she does live here. So I filled that out and had Ron sign that, just in case they don't like what I bring to yeah. them. So I was like, <laughs> okay God, I'm ready now. Got my appointment, going next Tuesday. Not in my plan. So why didn't he want me there but I think he did want me there because there was this little old man that was standing in the line and I go, um, because I couldn't tell, because here's this row here and on the roll here it says appointments. And then you're in this line and it doesn't say anything. And there's nobody in this line, so I'm like, so does that mean that's the appointment line? Or yeah. this is the row for the appointment line and this is the row for... So I leaned up to the little man you know, and I said, do you have an appointment? Yes. So this must be the line for appointments. Well, I hope so. So I go to the people over here, they're in line next to us. I go, do you have an appointment? No, no. I'm like, I think this is, must be the appointment line. So we go over to the next line, you know. He gets in back, I said, oh no, no, you were, you were before me, get here. So the lady calls for one next, with the next appointment. And the guy comes up and I was like, oh no, you don't have an appointment. He does. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here he goes, you know. Well, he had evidently stuff all he knew. I didn't. So God chose him, not me, that day. You know, I was like, okay, well maybe I was here for that little guy, and now I gotta go home. But I don't, I don't know, but it's so cool to watch God's big picture, okay? Instead of go, well, that was a total waste of time. Maybe not, maybe not. Maybe I just need to be right there, and now I need to go home, and your time is next Tuesday. I don't know, but it's no, cool. I'm thinking you think that this, he wouldn't be uh, concerned about about this, it's just not big enough, you know. That's it. And yet, you you feel his presence. And all the it time. Is, it is. It's all the time. He, does, he doesn't have to, to do all this. You just feel it. Yes. He's, he's, you know he's, he's guiding your life. And nothing is like, yeah, it's just that was a waste of time. No. Yeah. No, no, no. It's not a, if you're called and you are chosen, he's going to work everything out for your good because you are the called. It's okay? just amazing. It just Go in with that Lord frame Lord. of mind. Okay, if somebody's in the checkout line for only 10 items and they're angry with you because you have 11, you know? <laughs> yeah, this happens all the time. You know what, just check his stuff out so we can go because he's in a hurry, I'll pay for it, that way he can get out of here. What does that do to his anger? Psst. Yeah. Right, now you go, ooh. Good, this is what a Christian is supposed to do. I'm not gonna enter into your anger, but you can enter into my peace. Well, they say that people who smile a lot Mm. and have a positive attitude, live longer. <laughs> well, wouldn't they? There's not such stress, that would be a good right? Yeah. I need a bumper sticker that says that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to enter into your anger, but you can enter into my peace. <laughs> By knowing the Prince of Peace. I'm car. Right? <laughs> okay. I can dance for you. I'm my car. Well, you're messing with my peace. <laughs> okay, now look at... my peace. Go faster. God demonstrated his... 
power through Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. How did he demonstrate his power through Pharaoh? He hardened his heart. Whose choice was it to harden his heart? But who had it already? Pharaoh Pharaoh had already been against God. He told you that in chapter 7, didn't he? Okay, he's going to harden his heart. His heart is hardened against me. All right? We know that because of Pharaoh's attitude every time. Okay? Then he wants to let him go into the desert, but only the men, not the women and children. Why? Because, you know, okay, well, I'll let you go do that. That's on my terms. Not on God Almighty's terms. My terms, because I am Pharaoh. You can't go unless I say you go. Not exactly. And then you have to come back. And then you have to come back. Right. That's they it. They want to come back. They won't come back, and they won't want them to come back. Yeah. Okay? Um, did you not see the Lord hardened his heart? Pharaoh hardened his heart. The Lord, Fred, did you see that? Did you have mm. a problem with that? No. No. I, I, just, I just didn't no. because I knew, and you know people that already are towards that bent. Okay? God's going to use them for his purpose. Whether, and yeah, we talked about that last week. Does God use evil people for his purpose? Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. Okay? Pharaoh is a good example. Why wait for plague after plague after plague? Why do we have to have ten? Why couldn't we just have two and move on? That's again the potter. Mm -hmm. The clay asking the potter, why do we have to? But again, if you studied Exodus with us, you will know that every one of those plagues refers to one of their gods. Mm-hmm. And God wipes them one after the other. Okay? Which is wonderful to study and look at. Like, oh my gosh, God showed he was more powerful than that one, and that one, and that one, and ultimately over Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. Okay? The sun does not rise with you and set with you. Okay? Unless you do what I told you, your firstborn will die. Do you really think that he believed? That he writes the sun always just. Yes, I do believe he believed that because that's what pharaohs believed. That was their religion. Everything they did was very meticulous, orderly, because mm-hmm. that was their religion. And the people believed he was next to God. So when God said something, it was through Pharaoh. So and then, Pharaoh said something, that was it. And their pride was so much be, as, a, as a result of what they believed, look what they received. Yeah. Therefore, making them more prideful, then how could I be wrong? Yeah, because that's you not know, in there. Because if I am wrong, then what's next? You know? But you think they were always on time? <laughs> I think that the Egyptians were always on time? No, the Pharaoh always had time yes. to go out there oh, yes. and raise the sun. Oh, yes. Because they had learned Absolutely. it from since they were a child, even though sometimes that, that child life. didn't become the Pharaoh, as we <laughs> read, but, mm-hmm. you know, but... No sleep in. Okay, if they again. If they slept over. Yeah, I sleep in. Yeah, <laughs> no sleep in. <laughs> Notice now he demonstrates his power through Pharaoh, but what is verse 22? His he wrath. He demonstrated his wrath. We also know in 3, he demonstrated his... Righteousness. righteousness and then in chapter 5 we know he demonstrates what his love his love okay how can he do that <coughs> through, his son. through his son he can do that because he's the potter he can do that because he is sovereign he is just and he is holy and righteous and good all the time okay next one word studies let's go to the word studies we looked at vessels, okay? Yeah. What did you find out about vessels? I love that. <laughs> it was kind of short, right? Yeah. Can you what? click it again because I think I put the... Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. An object or a container. It was a common Greek metaphor for body since Greeks believe the souls temporarily lived in bodies. And that isn't that interesting. So yes. it's just a vessel. Okay? It's just being used by you for now but not for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of persons in a moral respect, referring to those on whom the divine wrath or mercy is to be exercised according to what? The divine potter. The purpose of the divine potter. Oh, that clears it up a whole lot, okay? Remember that you are a vessel of what? 
A mercy. Mercy. This is what your body indwells. Mercy. Then what are you supposed to exhibit? Mercy. Mercy. Okay. Not, you did this to me, so this is what you deserve. So that's what I'm going to give to you. Oh, well, yeah, you can do that. I'm sure we've all done that. Sure is a temptation. It is a temptation, but God always makes a way of escape, so you don't have to do that. All right? That would be the flesh taken back over, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Wrath. Do I have wrath up there on the same side? Yes. Mm-hmm. Anger as a state of mind. Know anybody like that? Yeah. They're just always angry. It's just like they never had a good day, and they're just mad all the time. Okay? Ever had a kid like that? No matter mm-hmm. what you do, they're just no. mad. Mad, mad, mad. And you want to come... No, sat my kid down. What is it going on with you? We're just mad all the time. Nobody wants to be around you. Why are you mad? I'm not mad. You want me to play that back for you right there? Did you hear that? I'm not mad. I had a friend who said, I love my child, but I do not like him. (laughs) And there are times that you've gone through every kid like that, okay? (laughs) I love you, but right now I don't like you very much. (laughs) Okay? You're allowed to live here because we allow you to live here. But would it be my choice at this time? Yeah, not really. <laughs> not really, because you just create this turmoil in my haven. And I don't like that. So you need to fix it because, you know, you're just messing up the house. If and I beat you with an inch of your life, will it make any difference? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I have said that. Will it make any difference? What do they say? No. The person said... I don't think so, Mom. <laughs> That's how angry. Okay, well, I won't waste that time, but just know I'll feel better if I do. So. <laughs> Referring, okay, Aristotle says that orgia, or how do you pronounce it? Anger is desire. I like ogre. Ogre. Grief. Yeah. That's ogre. O-G-R-E. Yeah. Yes. I know, but I mean, that's you see the root of it. Mm-hmm. Notice that it also says referring to divine judgment. Inflicted upon the wicked. How do you know that it's not inflicted upon you as a believer? No, Romans 8 1 says there is no condemnation. No condemnation. Wrath upon who? Those who are in Christ Jesus. We go further on in that chapter, those who are the called according to his purpose, okay? Remember that. That is not upon you. Those are upon the wicked. All right. Now we looked up. What else? Prepared before. Okay. So these are references to wrath. One eighteen is wrath is revealed. Two five <coughs> says that the unrepentant of heart stores up wrath. Wrath of themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. We read that. Three five says God who inflicts wrath is not unrighteous. Have you ever inflicted wrath and been unrighteous? Hmm. Well, I don't like to admit it, but yes, I have. Okay? And then Romans 5, 9, the justified are saved from God's wrath through Christ. You don't have to be worried that you're a vessel now prepared for wrath anymore. Okay? Uh, And God may know the riches of his glory on vessels of mercy. Okay? Prepared beforehand. I am predestined by God to walk in mercy and love. Okay? Next. Yeah, you contrast the vessels of wrath. I don't want to be a vessel of wrath. Let's go to our definition of mercy. Okay? Uh, I typed this out because I just didn't know what to leave out. Because it was so good. In Zooty Audience, I just kept reading. I'll just talk. No, I've got to add that too. Okay, I'll stop. No, I can't stop there. I got it. Okay. Because this spells it out. Especially salvation, okay? And I've had to write this in Romans because I'm just going to go down here. Um, It's special and immediate regard to the misery, which is the consequence of sin, but it's active pity. Active pity, okay? You can go into a hospital room and go, I am so sorry, darling, this is happening to you. I just feel so, is there anything I can do? No, that's pity. You want to be active, but you don't know what to do. Okay? But God does. He knows how to distribute mercy. Okay? Reveal his mercy. Now look at this. 
Charis, C-H-A-R-I-S, is God's free grace. That's the word for grace. And gift, displayed in the forgiveness of sins as offered to men in their guilt. Not in their now I'm all cleaned up, right? It's offered while you're guilty. God's mercy, there's our word, is extended for the alleviation of the consequences of sin. That's how you explain mercy. I don't get the consequences of sin. Grace identifies the free nature of salvation. So that's why we get unmerited favor. Grace, uh, mercy is the application. See how salvation has worked out here? Don't the apostles always go, grace, mercy, and peace to you? Always in that order. Now I know why. Grace is extended, okay? It identifies your salvation. Mercy applies that grace and reminds us that redemptive freedom rescued us from the pathetic condition of our sinfulness and peace is the effect of the mercy from the grace. That was so good, I was like, I just got to write the whole thing down because now I get why they say grace, mercy, and peace to you. And in that order, they didn't go say peace, grace, mercy. They always say grace, mercy, and peace because one is the effect of the other. Okay, but I'm not going to read the rest of it. You guys can read the rest of it, but uh, wow. Now I finally get grace, mercy, and peace. Okay, that just everyone affects the other. So I hope that really gives you a sense of, oh, I get it. Okay, let's go to uh, verse 23. It continues the thought, right? Believers, the called Jew and Gentile, because there is no distinction. distinction. There's no partiality with God. Go back to, I'm not lying. <laughs> it's for everybody. Okay, I've established that from chapter 1 to 8. I've told you all have sinned. I've told you Abraham is an example of righteousness by faith, not the law. So what is the Jew going to benefit in or boast in? Nothing, because Abraham could have. He could have boasted in his flesh, but not according to God. Verse 23 continues our thought in that it says, And he did so to make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy which he prepared before him for glory even us it's Jew, it's Gentile everyone, there is no distinction okay, and then we went into Hosea, let's go on um, 27 to 29 Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of the sons of Israel be like the sand of the sea, okay now didn't you always think that's going to be the sand of the shore? I always think the beach. Mm -hmm. No. This is the sea. This is the depths of the sea. Yeah. I'm like, there's more sand in the sea than there is on the shore because the sea is bigger. Right. Didn't get that. How many times have you read that? I've read it and read it and read it. I'm like, oh, wait, wait. Depths of the sea, not sand that's of the shore. That's what we visually see. That's what we see. Right. The and beach. with the Titanic having its 100th anniversary, right. how many times have you seen the... Bottom of the sea now. Yeah, right, right. My goodness, that just multiplies it. Okay? Um, it is the remnant that will be saved. You see how many there are descendants, but it's only the remnant that's going to be saved. For the Lord, for the Lord will execute his word on the earth thoroughly and quickly. Now you had to look up all of these verses in their context mm -hmm. of what Paul is pulling out right off the top of his head. Mm. How can he do that? Mm. He knows scripture because he's a Pharisee. He studied yeah, he under Gamaliel. Was trained, he, he was trained him. as a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. He has it all in his head. And just as Isaiah foretold, unless the Lord of the Sabbath has left to us a posterity. Now the NIV says survivors. That helped me understand what posterity Posterities and world. We don't really use that word a lot. But we use survivors. Mm -hmm. We would have become like Sodom and would have resembled Gomorrah. What do we know happened to them? Completely destroyed. destroyed. They are completely Found destroyed. By God, no man's hand it's touched them. It hasn't been ever built upon. Ever, not ever yeah, again. Ever that is desolate land and will forever be desolate land. All right? Um, okay, go on to the next one. 
Because of God's promises, some are spared. Because they're vessels of mercy. All right? We're going to finish up. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who do not pursue righteousness attain righteousness, even the righteousness which is by faith. But Israel, who is he talking to in this whole chapter? Jews. Jews. But, I don't like the but before Israel if I'm a Jew. <laughs> Pursuing a law of righteousness did not arrive at that law. Why? Because that's what his audience is going to say, right? Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as though it were by works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone. Now, who was the stumbling stone? Jesus. Right. And remember, it said um, further on, they don't stumble as to fall. Okay, have you ever stumbled and not fallen? Mm hmm. Okay, so some stumble, but they don't fall all the way. That means maybe you can go back and go, what am I stumbling over? Why don't I get it? Okay? Mm -hmm. A lot fall. A lot fall, and they'll never go back. Yeah. Some just stumble, but they don't fall. They have a chance to. They still have a chance to go back and go, hmm, yeah. maybe I missed something. How many times do you just stumble and keep on walking? Okay, I do that. Do However, that. sometimes I go, what was that? <laughs> you know, I don't want to do that again. Or maybe that's something I need to pick up. You know, I need to stumble over that again. Okay? <laughs> or the kids need to pick up. Right. Uh, this is it. The Gentiles didn't pursue righteousness, but they attained it. Israel pursued it, but not by faith. By rules and regulation and tradition. Okay? They didn't believe in him who gives righteousness. Wow. Remember, it's a gift. Freely. I take it, or I can leave it. Lots of Gentiles take it. They don't leave it. Okay? 9-11 uh, is all about Israel and God's choice. So as we go into chapter 10, remember, that's the context. Okay? It is... All about Israel and God's choice. But remember, that's not emotion. It's choice. Because that's who he is. He doesn't operate on emotion. I think we see Paul's emotion, though, and his grief over his own people. Yes. And I think these last verses right here are so key because, oh, so close, oh, so close. Yes. But you missed it. But you missed it. Yeah. yeah. But it is still in Zion. It's still that rock. Isn't that why he's so urgent? You missed it, but you're not dead, so you still have a choice. Let me remind you again, this is what happened. It's for you. It got to you first. It only got to the Gentiles because you rejected it. But it doesn't mean you don't get it too now. He's grieving. He's grieving inside because this is his people. And they're stumbling over the precious Messiah that came. And that's pretty much what you could see throughout his whole life, till the end. Mm -hmm. He's preaching, preaching, preaching. You've got to get it. You've got to get it. I don't want you to die in ignorance. Okay? That's the way we need to be. These people that are next to us that we know think they're saved, and they're not. They have a religion and no relationship. That's who we've got to be urgent and urgent and urgent about. You were talking about that God doesn't act with emotion, but... Whenever he was so angry with the Jews because of their continual rejection of him mm -hmm. and disobedience, mm -hmm. he just wanted to wipe them off. I don't I, I'm, what I, I guess I should have said his decision is not based on emotion. Okay. okay. Because, well, that was a decision, too, that he was thinking of making until he was said, but Lord, they will not know right. you. They would not that. But remember, it's also in all of his attributes, right. all at the same time. Right. Okay. But I, but I feel, I could feel his emotion. Yes. Maybe because I, hindsight, I can see how he would be so disturbed because of their continual rejection. Right. Right. But then, how many times do we reject different things that he puts in our path? And do you not? Hopefully. The closer you get to the Lord, the more you get into his word, do you not grieve when people uh, blaspheme his name and, mm -hmm. and say, you know, oh, it's like, oh, God, that must hurt so bad. 
Oh, I'm so Imagine. sorry that they're say oh, that's awful, Lord, I'm so sorry that they are taking you at such unholy measures to forget who you are, okay? And then if, I, I hope our sin grabs us like that. Like, oh, Lord, I can't believe I did that. I, Last I'm Friday, so sorry. Yeah. Last okay. Friday when Joni and I were at our Rodrigo meeting, we were sitting across the table from these two ladies. Day, daylight dark. And it was, I was talking with this yeah. lady about, um, you know, the <laughs> stitching. That's what we were there for, naturally. Well, Joni had gotten into a conversation with this other friend that was also taking a, a, a precepts, but a 40 minute Bible study uh -huh. in uh -huh. her church, you know. So we were like, <gasps> Yeah. And Joni was like, oh, excuse me, you know, you know, Margie, you know, and but and then then this one was like, oh, y'all must have just started doing Bible study. And I said, I'm 74 years old and I've been doing Bible study. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, since I became a Christian, right? Yeah. Oh. And why did she think you just began? Well, because she said the only excited. time she re thinks that anybody who was excited about God's word they're was new that because they were new at it. Because yeah. I I was brought up in going to school yes. Yes. And, and you know, and it was always shoved at me and, and she was very resentful of it. And she said, I just don't care for it at all. Right. And I just my heart grieved. That yeah. doesn't it? For that's her. like people going, how can you pray for an hour? Because she did not oh, like, know this. I have a lot to talk about. There's no relationship. Okay. There's I know. No she relationship. probably had never mm -hmm. had it presented she to her. And that, don't you agree with that? Mercy. I do. Yes. Because the, love. the nuns, oh. you know, she was in Catholic school. The nuns never showed that love, that right. joy right. to her through God's word. So there's a relationship. No. So there's rule, regulation, regulation, regulation. Like, this oh, is what we have to do. Bang, 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 bang. You know, I pray, pray all I, again, if I just had to pray, I'll get bored and distracted. But when you pray scripture, you pray scripture, but then another one comes to you. And that oh, another yeah. one comes to you. I always. And then another one comes to you, and then, and oh, yes, because of bling, bling, blah, 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 and it's just amazing how the more scripture gets into you, the more it comes out, the more you can mm -hmm. speak God's language back oh. to him. It's amazing because he brings that scripture back in your mind. You're like, oh, that's what I need to say to you. This is what I'm feeling. And this is what I feel like I need to pray for this person. And I just don't know about that. Yeah. But thank you, God, that you live inside your groaning spirit knows what to say. So he's telling you what needs to be said, but I can't say it because I don't I just don't know. Why is that happening over and over and over? What I don't know how to pray for that person, but I know that you do. And pretty soon time just goes by. And you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta go do some stuff. I got stuff on my list I gotta go do. But it's precious because that's like an interaction between you and God, okay? And it's not mm -hmm. always one-sided, one-sided, because who's bringing that scripture back into your head? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, who is God who's speaking, okay? And that is the most wonderful, wonderful relationship. I. Yeah, I can't not be excited about that. I know. That's a relationship with Almighty God who was, chose me to be a vessel of his mercy. Oh, my Lord. And we were excited that our friend was doing three steps too. And, you know, yes, oh, that's, oh, it. You know. that's it. All right, I'm going to give you a break. It's where I'm going to start, like, in two minutes. I'm going to put this in. Thanks for being my operator. Oh, you're so oh you know, one of the things that, that's really...